Juan Lucho Blanco Pitlo is a research fellow at Asia Pacific Pathways to Progress. He joins us now live from Manila. Welcome to the program, Lucho. I know it's a really late night or early morning for you. Early morning. Uh, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Pleasure to be here. So, another Marcos president is all but certain. Uh, I have to start by asking did you think you would ever see the day of such a comeback for this family? Well, uh, if we go by the uh, surveys, consistently had been performing uh, as the front runner. So I, I think uh, m many people are uh, at the back of their minds. The prospect of a return of the Marcos presidency has been uh, there in the equation. But what's so stunning, I suppose, for us from the outside uh, is the legacy of his late father and the era of corruption and profligacy attached to that name. So uh, how has uh, Bong Bong Marcos uh, shifted the narrative? Well, certainly the martial law period, the uh, role of his father, the authoritarian years of that uh, service of his late father is a controversial and a polarizing chapter in Philippine history. But at the same time, the, the power base, uh, support base uh, from his father, and uh, of course, those that continue to see uh, some uh, positive elements during the rule of his father, uh, such as uh, in terms of the law and order, in terms of discipline, uh, infrastructure, uh, those things, uh, the loyal base of uh, uh, the late uh, father, which uh, is carried on by the son, uh, has been uh, a force. I think a pretty much solid base that uh, he was able to build on. And of course, the support of uh, many political uh, groups, uh, including dynasties uh, like the Marcos dynasty, and of course, the choice of the vice president, uh, connecting uh, power bases in the northern part of the country and in the southern part. So I, I think that was like uh, a good uh, strategic uh, move uh, by the younger Marcos to uh, make this uh, choice that enabled him to land on this uh, position where he is right now. And also during his campaigning, he seemed to have uh, painted that whole era as a golden period for the Philippines. Uh, how did he manage to do that? Well, certainly uh, the uh, issue of the law, uh, human rights abuses, and uh, corruption, the huge debt uh, accumulated during the uh, late years of his father, uh, of course, had been uh, very uh, sharp uh, issues pointed at him. And uh, part of uh, the approach uh, of the social media strategy employed by his camp uh, has been seen uh, by many as uh, critical in swaying public opinion mm. and allay his concerns. So I, I think. Uh, it it, it uh, played a part in um, getting him to, to, to where he is uh, right now. Right. And lastly, uh, Lucho, you know, opponents of Mr. Marcos Jr. fear that his presidency would be a return to the old days of his father's rule. Are those fears justified? Well, uh, if we see uh, the experience of other countries uh, where the... Uh, the sions, the young, uh, the sons and daughters of ex-strongman leaders uh, assume power decades after their fathers uh, in South Korea and in uh, uh, Indonesia, in the case of Megawati and in the case of uh, Park yun uh, they have been elected. And uh, if we go by their experiences, they did not return to the fold of the uh, authoritarian years uh, that was associated with their late uh, parents. So I, I don't see uh, Bong Bong Marcos taking the, uh, the route uh, that uh, his late father treaded. Uh, of course, the, the public opinion, the, the circumstances of the present uh, do not give him any uh, pretext to, to do that also. So uh, I, I think the chances of him uh, proclaiming martial law under the present uh, conditions, uh, of course, unwarranted and will only mm -hmm. backfire. 